May I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. The Pauline letters may be the most important writings in the New Testament. The epistles were written earlier than any of the Gospels, and for the most part, Paul's letters represent the spirit and thought that shaped the early church. Paul preached Christ and Christ crucified. In so doing, he spoke of the ministry of reconciliation as a way of understanding the central tenet of our faith. For the love of Christ urges us on because we are convinced that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he dies for all so that those who might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. Paul emphasizes who Christ was, the Son of the living God, the great reconciler, the one who frees us from sin and makes possible our salvation. Christ died for us so that we might live, not just now on this earth, but in eternity in communion with the dancing saints. Paul, for Paul, Christ was above all a reconciler. To reconcile means to restore to friendship and harmony. Because of human sin, people have been cut off from God and from one another. And for this reason, they, we, are not whole. Christ shows that it was possible to restore a sense of wholeness and create harmony and friendship with God and with one another. We do this by following the way of the earthly Jesus and believing Christ to be our Lord and Savior. Your presence here today, even on such a rainy day, should help remind you of this. Jesus was someone who no one really understood in this world, even his closest disciples. We should not worry too much if we really don't understand him either. But we still can follow his example and try to live in the way he lived, love one another, even our enemies, give of ourselves in helping the world, heal creation, support the poor and the oppressed. These are the many ways to do the, there are many ways to do these things, many opportunities to serve others and stand with those who need our love and support. Paul writes later uh, in the chapter we read for today, just a few verses after them, he writes, God reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. Christians, we should ourselves be reconcilers, reconcilers in a world of hatred, injustice, inequality and war. We can be reconcilers at many different levels, in our homes, at our workplace, at church, in our society and in the wider world. Here in Hong Kong, we should be reconcilers, creating understanding with the wider world and with the China mainland of which we are a part. We can therefore help our territory move forward with power and vigor and strength. Hong Kong needs a sense of harmony. And as Christians, we should lead the way in creating harmony and embracing friendship with one another. My grandmother on my mother's side was a reconciler. She was also the deepest religious influence on me. She was a quiet reconciler. 
I lived with her for a time when I was a child, and I saw this every day. She didn't speak much English, and we called her Mumu, a Finnish word meaning grandma. And we were captivated by her presence whenever we were with her. Maybe you had grandmothers or other relatives like this. When the children fought, she would bring us together. When family members argued about money, she would say, God will provide for our needs. When we prayed for before meals, actually it was she who prayed before meals, she would shed tears of thanksgiving for the many blessings she had received. She always prayed very, very long prayers, and we became very hungry. And one Sunday, my elder sister said, after one of these long prayers, I slept too. Momo was not well educated. She was an unlettered woman. But it's by her presence that she brought a sense of peace and calm to all. This revealed her inner strength and her deep faith. Once there was a dispute in her parish about what to do with a surplus in the budget. She very seldom spoke in church or in public, but this time she got up and said, we must give this to the poor. They never have a surplus. And this is just what the parish did, based on her testimony. I have always admired the Quakers, the Religious Society of Friends. They used to meet here at St. John's Cathedral, and maybe they still do. I'm not sure. Uh, the Quakers have a very simple service of worship, a Quaker meeting, it's called. They sit silently in prayer until someone, moved by the Spirit, stands up and speaks. Then he or she sits down. Sits down. No one discusses this. More silence. No hymns, no sermon, no Eucharist, just silence. You should attend a Quaker meeting sometime. Their silence forms the Quakers as agents of reconciliation. They are a peace church and enter into situations of war and conflict to work for peace. Sidney Carter, who wrote The Lord of the Dance and other hymns that we sometimes sing here at St. John's Cathedral, was a committed pacifist and a Quaker. In World War II, he was a conscientious objector that means he opposed the war, but he agreed to serve in the Friends Ambulance Corps, putting himself at great risk, and served in Egypt, Palestine, and Greece, helping the wounded and the sick and taking them to the hospital. In Carter's most famous hymn, he uses the dance as a metaphor of Christ's work of reconciliation. One verse goes, I dance for the scribe and the Pharisee, I almost feel like singing this, but I don't think you would like that. Uh, I'm not a very great singer. I dance for the scribe and the Pharisee, but they would not dance and they would not follow me. I dance for the fishermen, for James and John. They came with me and the dance went on. The dance went on. And in following Christ, the disciples and all of us here continue in the dance. Dancing is an active movement of the body that expresses happiness. And in a sense, this becomes a prime metaphor for reconciliation. I'm not saying you have to like to dance. I'm saying you have to go with the movement as you become an agent of reconciliation. We often speak of the communion of saints as the dancing saints, which expresses their continuing movement and involvement in life after death. Dancing defies death, just as reconciliation defies war and conflict. Today is Father's Day, and for all fathers here, a dancing day. It's not a religious feast day, but in European countries, it used to be celebrated on March 19th, the feast day of St. Joseph, the earth earthly father of Jesus. Joseph was Jesus' adopted father, but his father nonetheless, the one, the one who with Mary raised Jesus from childhood. My younger brother was adopted, 
and he was just as much the son of my father as I was. It is Joseph whom I'm interested in and whom I've always been interested in, even though the New Testament says very little about him. He's not prominent in the Bible, but I have always been drawn to Joseph. He lived the gospel of reconciliation, which I have been talking about. The birth of Jesus, or the fact that Mary was with child when he married her, could not have been easy for him. But he raised the child as his own. He was someone in the background, a quiet reconciler like my mumu. And Joseph helped reconcile his family to the world and the world to Jesus. He was a quiet believer and supporter. Joseph stood by Mary, supported Jesus, and all the while continued his work as a carpenter so that the family could put food on the table. Joseph may also be regarded as a model or a metaphor of the reconciling church. We can say that Joseph was adopted by the church just as he adopted Jesus, not his own son, not the son of his flesh, but the son he loved and raised as his own. Many of you here became Christians later in life, and so you too were adopted by the church in making the choice to become Christians or to join us here today. Unlike others here, I was born into the church, so-called, born into the church. I was baptized as an infant before I knew what was going on. But through confirmation, I too was adopted into the church and chose to become a member of the church and affirm that I would follow Jesus. We all help in our own ways to continue with the dance of reconciliation. Following Jesus means we are reconcilers like him. We become friends of God and strive for harmony in this world to continue the dance. For this, we must uphold justice, help the poor and work for peace, and do all sorts of other reconciling things however we can. The dance goes on. Amen. <laughs>